Hello, Dr. Newport. You have been practicing medicine for over 40 years and are, on, are the author of four books on how ketones can help us with Alzheimer's disease. Most recently, this was uh, Clearly Keto for Healthy Brain Aging and Alzheimer's Prevention. So welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me, Richard. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, you're welcome. So I, I, I read through the book. I think uh, your story is amazing. And so it would be really good to talk about that uh, to start with. And the book was very thorough and very practical. And that, so I really like that. Um, but to start with, perhaps you could introduce yourself a little bit and, you know, the story with your husband and how you used a ketogenic diet to kind of help him get better from Alzheimer's. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yes, I am a physician, as you said, um, and I am a neonatologist, a newborn specialist, and I practiced for 30 years in newborn intensive care units in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. And, um, and then I've done some other things since then, but my husband, Steve uh, was an accountant and that worked perfectly for our family. He was able to work from home and, um, be there for our two daughters. I had a lot of emergencies and it just, you know, worked beautifully. And however, when he was 51 years old, he started having problems getting his accounting work finished, which had not been a problem before. Um, and he started missing appointments with the girls, even if I would call like 30 minutes ahead of time to remind him he would still forget. And um, then he started forgetting if he'd been to the bank and the post office. And at this point he was only 51. And I thought that's not normal, you know, for 51. And so, and he was also quite depressed at the time. So he saw a neuropsychiatrist to evaluate him. And that doctor mentioned dementia at the time, but he said, well, more likely it's depression, you know, that's causing his memory uh, impairment um, and, you know, prescribed antidepressants. And he said, but well, we'll watch him, you know, we'll follow him and, um, and, he, you know, continued to get worse. And it just happened that I uh, had an opportunity to open a new newborn intensive care unit about an hour north of where we lived. And we ended up, we moved that year. And it became very obvious after that, that something was wrong. Um, he really couldn't find his way around and that had never been a problem before. It was a small town, just a few arteries, you know, main, you know, the uh, main roads to get around on. And um, he just started spending like hours and hours in his garage looking for something. He was always looking for something in his garage, just strange behavior. So I contacted um, our local, like an Alzheimer organization, and um, they referred me to, you know, to a neurologist for him and he was evaluated. And the doctor said, well, he does have some type of dementia. He had a very complete evaluation um, written, you know, evaluations and blood work and an MRI. The MRI was normal at that point, but he um, um, said, I'm going to watch him. I don't want to call it Alzheimer's yet, but let's see what happens. And then six months later, he said, yes, I'm quite sure this is Alzheimer's. And that was devastating. Uh, at this point, he was 54 when he was diagnosed. And you know, you don't expect somebody to have Alzheimer's that early. And that's something like 1% of cases are early onset before age 65. So it is fairly rare, but, um, you know, he continued to get worse. And by 2008, he had lost all of his accounting, wasn't driving for a couple of years. Um, he was going downhill very quickly. Um, couldn't converse very well in the mornings. He walked strange strangely he couldn't pick up a speed and run and had tremors and that type of thing and um there there were two clinical trials that came along at the same time and i signed him up you know for both clinical trials to try out and i was reading the night before the first screening about the risks and benefits of the two drugs that he was going to try out for and I came upon just by accident, a press release about a medical food that was going to come out about a year later that had done uh, testing with just a single dose. And nearly half of the people with Alzheimer's who took it had improvement in their cognitive scores after just a single dose. And I thought, well, it didn't say what it was or how it worked. So I was able to get their patent application 
And uh, I found out that it was medium chain triglyceride oil, MCT oil. And I knew what that was because I'm a neonatologist. So it comes back to my training. We used to add that to the feedings of our tiniest premature newborns who were under two pounds to help them gain weight faster and grow faster. They would get home faster. And then they started adding it to infant formulas because it, um, these medium chain triglycerides, MCTs are in human breast milk. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and then one thing I learned in the patent application is that um, it's uh, MCT oils extracted from coconut oil. So that's where I got the idea of what to do for him. And the, the reason that this could help somebody with Alzheimer's has to do with what's going on in the brain in Alzheimer's. There's a problem of insulin resistance. Um, like most cells can use glucose, nearly all cells can use glucose as a fuel. Uh, a fuel is needed to operate cells. Um, and insulin is required either directly or indirectly to get glucose into cells. But when you have insulin resistance, which happens in prediabetes and diabetes type two, um, the glucose doesn't get into the cells normally. And this is what's going on in the Alzheimer brain. Glucose just isn't getting into cells in certain parts of the brain and the person declines uh, because the, the, the neurons are sitting there. They need gasoline in the tank to operate and it just isn't there. Basically is an easy way to think about it. So um, the cool thing about MCT oil is that when you consume it, part of it is converted to ketones and ketones are an alternative fuel for the brain. Um, and ketones, uh, this uh, the research in, uh, mainly done in Canada with PET scans is showing that ketones are taken up normally in the Alzheimer brain and in, in the cells in Alzheimer's. And um, they um, ketones don't need insulin they're kind of a tinier molecule than um, glucose. And like normally in our bodies, ketones will come from um, like breaking down fat. If you haven't eaten for a while, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours, um, you use up most of the glucose that's stored in your body. And then you need another source of energy for your brain and other organs. And you start breaking down fat. And um, some of that fat is converted to ketones. But if you're eating just a regular diet, you know, where you eat a lot of carbohydrate and maybe you get up during the night to eat, or maybe you, you, you know, it's like eight hours between your last meal overnight, you're not going to be in ketosis. You're not going to increase your ketone levels. Um, and that's kind of a typical diet for many people. Um, so um, basically with the MCT oil, MCT oil is converted to ketones, at whether no matter what you eat. Uh, that this will happen. Um, so it's a really a neat trick. It was a, a really neat idea. And their pilot study showed that people did improve, you know, and you never hear that about Alzheimer's drugs. Like there's a new drug out now, Lacanumab, and there was another one, Aduhelm. They're mm -hmm. aimed at um, removing these plaques in the brain that accumulate. Um, the problem is that a lot of people have plaques in the brain and much, much more than some people with Alzheimer's, but they're their cognition is normal, their memory is normal. So, you know, they've been trying to target this plaque for a long time. Um, and, you know, with lecanemab, there are some potentially serious side effects. Uh, like 20% of people will either have some um, like um, um, bleeding in the brain, microscopic bleeding, or they'll have some edema, they'll have fluid that leaks into the brain. And so it's like one in five people that take it can have this. Um, it may slow down, you know, cognitive decline for the others, <laughs> but at what expense? And you don't know who that's going to happen to, you know, exactly. So, you know, medium chain triglycerides, MCT, is just a food. It's a food that uh, comes from coconut oil. It's used in infant formulas. It's that safe. And, um, and it actually improves cognition. Lecanemab does not improve cognition. They say it may slow down the decline in Alzheimer's. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer, 
because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we are happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Healthspan audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your um, support. So how, did, how was this working with uh, your, your husband? Okay, so, so then, you know, I'm learning about this <coughs> and it was about 1 a.m., Mm -hmm. And he's getting, he's going to be screened at 9am. So I didn't have any time to do anything about it. And he went for the screening and um, he uh, did poorly. He needed to get 16 out of 30 points on a memory test to qualify for the study. And we were very disappointed. And the doctor had him draw a clock, which is a test for Alzheimer's. And um, she asked him to, I, I'll show you. Well, okay, here's the book. <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And then here's the clock that he drew. Can you see it? Uh, up a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There it is. Yep. Yeah. So that doesn't look much like a clock. <laughs> no. A few little random circles and a mm. few numbers and they're scattered and uh, very disorganized. And the doctor, she said that he was on the verge of severe Alzheimer's. It was frightening. It was frightening. And I thought, okay, I read all of this the night before. We're going to get some coconut oil. <laughs> so we did that on the way home. And um, then I read, um, I looked up the fatty acid composition of coconut oil. I learned that it was 60, 60, 60 percent medium chain triglycerides. Mm -hmm. And I figured out how much coconut oil he would need to take to equal the medical, you know, that medical food, the dose that they gave you know, the people in their study. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that turned out to be a little over two tablespoons of coconut oil, you know, cause coconut oil has other fats in it. It has other things in it. Um, uh, but, um, so he needed to take that. And so the next day he was set up to screen for the clinical trial in the afternoon and, uh, at one in the afternoon. And so around nine, I gave him the coconut oil and oatmeal. I took some at the same time and I got indigestion. He was perfectly fine with it, <laughs> but, um, you know, we went for the screening and it was about three hours later, you know, well, about four hours later when he was tested and his score came up from 14 to 18 out of 30 points and he needed 16 to qualify. So he qualified for the study and we couldn't believe it. We thought, oh my gosh, you know, he, he may be one of the first people to get this promising drug that will help people with Alzheimer's, you know, um, so we, you know, we were ecstatic and I didn't know, was it really the coconut oil or was it just good luck or was it prayers? What was it? You know, so I thought oh, we're going to keep it going, but I started reading and getting my hands on everything I could about how to cook and how to use coconut oil, you know, in the diet. And he had two tablespoons, a little over two tablespoons every morning. And then I started cooking with it later in the day because I thought, you know, um, in the, um, the patent application, the people who, when they took MCT oil, the ketones kind of peaked around 90 minutes and were gone at three hours. And I thought, well, your brain needs fuel 24 seven. In fact, like when you're sleeping, it needs at least as much fuel as when you're awake. And um, so I thought, you know, why just one dose? You know, why not just incorporate it into the meals throughout the day? And so that's what, what we did. And um, just, he had steady improvement oh, even over the next four to five days, you know, he was much more alert. He said it was like a light switch came back on in his head that day, the day he started it, his mood improved. Um, he started um, uh, much having much better conversation, you know, in the morning he can find utensils in the drawer and get, you know, water from the dispenser and the refrigerator, which he had not been able to do. And um, just carry on a conversation with me. And he was whistling again and saying, you know, telling jokes again, you know, his personality was coming back. And and it's it just this was by a, the fourth or fifth day we were taught, you know, we said to each other, something has happened for the better. Something has improved here and we're going to keep this going. And um, so I started and I already was, you know, researching ketones, trying to learn as much as I could 
about all of this. And I um, happened upon an expert, Dr. Richard Veach at the NIH, V-E-E-C-H. And he um, <clears throat> he was up in age at that point himself, but he had been studying um uh, he was a, a an MD, but also a PhD that he had gotten his PhD at Oxford. And he had studied in the lab of Hans Krebs, who was very fam famous for much of what he worked out about metabolism. And Dr. Veach was right there with him at the time. And then he went to the NIH and he had been studying ketones for decades. And um, in the 1990s, he, he um, focused, he began to focus on ketones and the possible therapeutic benefits you know, that it could help people possibly with Alzheimer's. And um, in their lab, they had done a study showing that um, neurons that had that this toxin applied that causes Alzheimer's, that many more survived that there were ketones in these cultures with neurons. And the same thing for Parkinson's disease. So this was in 2000. And this is what gave the people with the MCT oil, uh, you know, uh, medical food, the idea to um, that this might help, that MCT oil might help Alzheimer's. So they started studying it then. They published their first results in 2004, which was the year Steve was diagnosed, but it was in a very obscure journal and it didn't get out in the press. I mean, it just wasn't out there at all. Um, in 2008, um, they had finished a trial. It wasn't published yet, but they had looked at 152 people. And again, almost half of them had improved cognition when they were taking MCT oil for um, uh, 90 days. And then some of them stayed in for six months. And, you know, it had, um, you know, basically some of them were back down to the baseline at six months, but that gave them six months of extra time, but they had improved cognition too. They were, their memories were better. They were functioning better. So, um, uh, you know, it, um, it, it, yeah, it just to me became very urgent. I thought, you know, this happened to Steve he improved and there are 35 million people out there in the world with Alzheimer's. <laughs> and, uh, it became, yeah. you know, my obsession that I have to let everybody know about this, you know? Um, but I contacted Dr. Veach. I was able, you know, his phone number was in Wikipedia and I called him and he answered the phone just like that. It was kind of amazing. And um, I asked him questions about coconut oil and MCT oil. I didn't tell him yet what, had happened with Steve, but um, I just asked him theoretically, do you think <laughs> that this could help somebody with Alzheimer's coconut oil? And and he was like, well, these guys called me about MCT oil a few years back. And I, I didn't think the levels would be high enough. And he was developing a ketone ester, which could greatly increase ketones quickly <laughs> within 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and he had been working on this since the mid 1990s. And um, so at this point, it was 2008, and um, they had the formulation that they felt was working well at that point, and they were just getting ready to test it, do toxic toxicity testing in people. And um, he had been trying and trying to get it mass produced to try to get funding to do Alzheimer's studies with it and wasn't having much success. You know, um, there's a lot of competition at the NIH for grants for Alzheimer's and uh, funding wasn't very high. It was less than a half. It was, you know, less than 500 million a year. Cancer was 9 million a year at that point. I mean, nine, no. Yeah. 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 I mean, billion, <laughs> 9 billion for cancer. And it was right. less than a half billion for Alzheimer's. It's much better now. But um, so, you know, I, when Steve was two weeks into this, you know, he was continuing to improve and he drew another clock <laughs> and um, let's see, I'll show you this one. So mm -hmm. can you see it? Yep. Yeah. I can so, see that. Yeah. so now you see it's got a full circle. All the numbers are there. There's quite a few hands of the clock. <laughs> yeah. And Steve explained to me later, he was trying to line up the numbers across from each other. That's why he drew all those lines. He was trying right. to make it nice and neat. Um, and um, I faxed it to Dr. Veach. And I told him what I had been doing and I faxed him the before and after clocks at two weeks. And he said, well, this is quite unexpected. You know, uh, um, he said he just didn't really think that something like coconut or MCT oil would produce enough ketones to have this effect. You know, so he he started um, he had several other associates that um, 
Uh, they were all up in age. <laughs> they had all been studying ketones. They'd been writing hypothesis papers about this for several years. And um, he had them call me um, and we talked and he started sending me all kinds of papers and all kinds of information about it. And um, and then I just, you know, like I said, I was obsessed with getting the message out. So um, I found out the Old Timer Association uh, it was going to have their international conference um, in July of that year. And this was May. So this was like two months later. Um, and I wrote a paper about it. It was just like a case report about my husband, Steve, how the medical food works, that it needs to be studied urgently. And by the way, there's this ketone ester out there that needs funding, you know, urgently, you know, to help people with Alzheimer's. And um, I, I planned to take this um, uh, article and to the conference and they have an exhibit hall there. And some people have tables. You can distribute information usually. And um, I sent them the article so they could see it. They agreed to let me have a table. I had 1,500 copies printed up in Chicago where the conference was going to be. We had to travel. And my sister and her husband came so they could stay with Steve, you know, while I and, and worked at the booth, you know, while I was going to the conference. And um, about three days before they contacted me by email and said, well, we changed our mind. You cannot have a table. <laughs> and um, they didn't want me to distribute the information. And, you know, they didn't really explain why they made up some excuse. Well, you have to be a corporation. I said, well, I'm a physician. I have a corporation. So this is my corporation. Well, it needs to be, you know, uh, I, I don't know. But there was, they had all kinds of excuses and they finally said, no, you just can't do it. And you can't distribute any, you know, at the conference, but you can come to the conference. So we, we went to the conference and um, they, my sister and her husband, they distributed copies out and about in, um, in Chicago. Um, I looked at quite a few poster presentations and if they were talking about nutrition, glucose, insulin, anything remotely related to this issue that ketones that I think these, these people might understand it. I would talk to them about it mm -hmm. and I would sneak, I would slip them a copy of my article. <laughs> so, you know, just trying to get the message out there. And, and then I, I started writing about it, you know, more, I started giving talks locally when we got home at health food stores, I, I would leave copies of the article there and then I would get invitations to, you know, give a presentation and Steve would come. And at the first time it was four people. And but then after a couple months, it was 80 or 90 people. It was pretty amazing. And then I got to be on a radio program locally and um, our regional newspaper then invited me, you know, they wanted to do a story about it. And they interviewed Dr. Beach for the story. They interviewed another, um, a lady whose mother had improved at that point that um, had gotten she had gotten in touch with me. Somehow she got my article that I wrote that I left in Chicago and she um, started doing this with her mother and her mother improved pretty slowly, but dramatically over two months. This was a lady that was, um, she was basically staying in bed. She didn't recognize her family. She was barely talking. She wasn't eating well. And when they started giving this to her slowly, she got up out of bed. She started talking and recognizing them and, and then one day she was getting in the refrigerator and they thought she was getting in trouble. She said, no, I'm looking for that cake that you bought yesterday. And they had bought a cake yesterday and they were just flabbergasted. And she kept improving. She started reading the newspaper again and six months later was crocheting again. And, you know, so, um, you know, but, you know, this was, you know, um, things happened with her even after the story, but it got, it was out in the paper and about the, the ketone ester and, um, and it went viral. That article went viral. A lot of people got the information. I was really happy about that. And then it, there was another article um, about a year later in the same paper with an update about it. Um, and so I, I, you know, I told Dr. Veach, I said, I, I feel like I want to write a book about all of this um, to try to get funding for you, you know, because uh, that was my goal was to get funding for this ketone ester because the levels are 10 times higher. I mean, literally 10 times more ketone from this ketone ester with just, you know, um, a, a relatively easy dose to take. It tasted horrible, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, um, it was very effective at, at increasing ketones. And there was so much potential for it. 
So um, I, it just was my life mission, you know, at that point. And Steve was kept improving. I mean, he, uh, two months after we started the coconut oil, I had, we had also added some MCT oil around six weeks. I started mixing the two together and, you know, which you can use in so many different kinds of foods, warm or cold. Um, and um, he, his gait normalized. He had been walking kind of slow and weird and he was just walking normally and he was able to run again. And then around three and a half months or so, he, one day he said to me, I can read, I can read again. And I said, well, why couldn't you read? And he said, well, he said the words were shaking around on the page. They were moving around. He said it was like satellite breakup on your TV, you know, that the words would go into like pixels and move around on the screen, he said. But now it had stopped. That had stopped. And he could literally read. And um, and he then around nine to 10 months, he started remembering things that had happened two or three weeks earlier, like a wedding we had gone to or a volcano that had happened. And he said, oh, that sunset's really beautiful tonight. It's probably from that volcano that erupted, you know, <laughs> and he would say things like that. And then he started remembering what he had read, details of what he had read several hours earlier. Uh, so he had made quite a profound improvement and um, he wanted to work badly. Um, he was bored and he um, I, he started volunteering at the hospital where I worked. He worked in the um, supply warehouse and um, they got pictures of him doing this uh, for that second round of um, uh, when the newspaper wrote an article about us. So it was really quite profound, you know, what happened with my husband. And, and then, um, he, you know, he was in, he was in the clinical trial too. At the same time, he, the end of July, he got into that clinical trial. He got to two, he tested again for the other one and he got an even higher score. He got 20 points and he got to choose which study. And it turned out neither drug was good. They were both bad drugs that, that were harmful, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but Steve was on the placebo for the first 18 months. We found out later. We didn't know. Mm -hmm. And um, he had improved so much before that he even started the study, you know, over two months that I was quite sure what we were seeing was, you know, from the um, coconut oil. But I couldn't be absolutely sure once he started that clinical trial. And um, but then we later learned he was on the placebo. So all of those effects, the only other thing that had changed was this, you know, using coconut and MCT oil. And we pushed it quite a lot. I mean, he was he Dr. Beach said, push it, uh, you know, as much as he can possibly handle. And he, he said until he pukes, <laughs> give it to him until he pukes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Steve never did uh do that. But, um, he, you know, uh, if you take too much too soon, like some people, if they take two tablespoons of coconut oil, they have diarrhea, you know, mm -hmm. I can't say that any more politely. They just, you know, will spend some time in the, in the, um, the bathroom. And, um, um, so I tell people to start it very slowly, like a half teaspoon to one teaspoon, a couple of times a day with food and just increase it slowly to avoid that problem. And most people will tolerate it. And, but we just slowly increased it for Steve and, and he got up to quite a lot. He was taking two or three tablespoons a few times a day, which was a lot of oil. And um, in the meantime, he we were already eating a Mediterranean type diet, whole food diet for a couple of years, but um, we were still eating some carbohydrates. Um, but he just started leaving the bread and the pasta and rice. He just wasn't eating that. He didn't near, eat nearly as much fruit as he had been. Um, and so he effectively was on a ketogenic diet, you know, after probably two or three months of doing this as we were increasing the fat and, um, and he tolerated quite well. He just, he did beautifully with it. It was quite amazing. <laughs>